Hi guys and welcome to the unboxing and setting up of the brand new mini UVB kit by Arcadia. I am happy to announce this is the world exclusive first look at this product on YouTube and I am very grateful that Arcadia chose me to try this out. Despite all of this though, please be aware that all opinions are still my own. Now before we start, a few of my long time subscribers may be quite confused as to why I am suddenly trying out a light for my leopard geckos despite being quite against them in the past. Now I'm still not fully sold on all lights for leopard geckos, but since I've been wanting to go all natural with my products recently, I had to remove synthetic vitamin D3 from their supplements, therefore it had to be replaced with a light. A full explanation will be in the description box below. But for now, let's have a look at what comes in the kit. So first of all, we have the light fitting. This is 34cm long and will fit nicely in your standard leopard gecko enclosure. There's also a reflector to make sure optimal light is redirected from behind the light and the walls and pushed back down to the floor of the vivarium. Then we have the light itself, it's an 8 watt 2.4% UVB T5 tube light which can be beneficial to all sorts of crepuscular species in small enclosures such as leopard geckos, corn snakes, just to name a few. You can also use this with amphibians and inverts. The kit also comes with mounting accessories, instructions, a power cable and a linking cable. Interestingly, you can actually connect 10 of these lights to one power source. This would be great if you had a large collection of reptiles whose tanks were next to each other. And I imagine that in a shop environment, this is ideal. This whole kit would set you back only about £30, which I think is pretty reasonable considering some lights alone can cost over that amount. Trust me, I bought the 22 watt Jungle Dawn. Very, very expensive. Anyway, the UVB lifespan is about 12 months, so you must remember to replace it. Though this goes for any kind of UVB light, since over time the potency of the UVB tends to deplete. Now one thing I did notice when I was researching about Arcadia lights is that on their website there is actually a page where you can fill in your details of when you started using a light and they'll send you a reminder when it needs changing. So now on to installing. First of all, have a quick practice run with installing the light. You must be careful though because it's quite delicate and very easy to break. Simply slot the two sides of the light into the fitting and rotate carefully. Now it only goes in one direction since I'm assuming all these light fittings will be made the same. Twist the light carefully towards the switch on the side. In other words, twist it anti-clockwise. Now of course you can plug the fitting in and check that the light is working. As you can see, it's pretty bright. After you turn it off, you want to figure out whereabouts you want to place a reflector. It can go along the side, by the switch, or on the back, just as long as it's pushing the light back onto the vivarium floor. Then you must choose which way you want to mount the light. There are two options, but I'm personally going with the L-shaped pieces since they seem a lot easier to use. They simply slide on at the sides. Once you've decided what you're going to use and where you want the reflector to be, remove the yellow plastic from the reflector and stick it on with the double-sided tape pieces that come as part of the mounting accessories. Make sure the reflective side is facing towards the light. So now for installing in the tank. You may have to keep up with me, I'm not sure how clear this will be. It was kind of tricky for me. So first of all, my vivarium's at an awkward angle and I can't remove the lid. So I decided the easiest thing to do was drill two holes in the top of the vivarium. Now prior to this, I put both of the L-shaped pieces onto the light fitting to mark where the holes had to go. With the screws provided, I screwed the first L-shaped piece into place. Then I slid the light fitting onto that L shaped piece in the vivarium and then screwed the remaining L piece that was on the left side of the light fitting onto the vivarium. I don't know how clear that was. I'm not very good with instructions. Anyway, once it was in, I switched on the light to check it was all working nicely. I decided to put it at the front of the tank since you really can't see the fitting at all. I also positioned the light to the right side of the tank. This way there could be a light gradient throughout the tank that allows the cold end to remain cold and remain shaded if the gecko wants to escape the light. Then I went and taped down the cables on top of the tank. Once again, due to where the vivarium is positioned, the cables wouldn't be seen from the outside of the tank. 
I found the best place to thread the cable through is the vent at the back. I may make a permanent hole in the vent, but for now, I have put it down the side. Obviously, whilst fitting all of this, Gizmo wasn't in the tank, so I introduced her back into the tank, and she seemed a little wary. Now, I usually see this behaviour when I've cleaned out a tank. I think she could tell there was something different. Another thing I noticed her doing is staring at her tail a lot. I don't know why, but she kept flickering her tongue and staring at it. By the way, the thermometer on the floor isn't usually there, I just wanted to see if there was any dramatic change in temperature. As far as I could tell, there wasn't, but in all fairness, the light hadn't been on long. Anyway, along with the light, I am trying out Arcadia's Earth Pro A and Earth Pro CA. So, Earth Pro A is a vitamin supplement that, unlike a lot of vitamin powders, you can't overdose your gecko on, so you know, that's good. It's also 100% natural and doesn't contain synthetic D3, hence why I need the light. The Earth Pro CA is obviously 100% calcium carbonate, so I'll be leaving that in Gizmo's tank at all times. As for the light, unlike what a lot of people seem to do with their lights, I'm only actually putting this on for half an hour in the morning, half an hour in the evening. Gradually though, through the month, I will increase it to two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening. This is because leopard geckos are crepuscular species, meaning they appear before dawn and after dusk. It's thought that in the wild, while they don't bask out in the open sun, they may get their natural vitamin D3 by catching some rays in the morning and evening where the UVB isn't as strong, hence why they have such thin skin. Furthermore, it's believed that even if they aren't out in the sun at all, through what's known as rock scatter illumination, light may very well be able to reach them even when they're in the shade. Anyway, I will go into more detail about the science behind this product when I do my review on this item, which will be in about a month's time. Though you might not have to wait as long as you think since the light went in on May the 4th. So not too long to go now. I will also do a review on the Arcadia supplements too. Now if you're not familiar with my channel, you may be wondering why Gizmo looks kind of thin. I highly recommend you checking out my videos such as the ovulation situation or any of my recent weigh-in videos. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much to Arcadia for letting me try this item. Thank you very much for watching guys and goodbye.